What's up everybody, it's your girl Sakina and I'm back for another review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So let's get straight into it. So the episode opens up with um, a scene of what's going on at Kyle's barbecue. Kyle is actually being the narrator and, you know, basically on some, you know, everything was going great up until the barbecue. But we got to talk about Garcelle's uh, LA Mission dinner. So they get into that. So Garcelle is getting ready. She is being honored by the LA Mission for her work. Uh, she is inspired by her upbringing in Haiti and she wants all the girls to come genuinely. So she doesn't want a whole Teddy situation like you guys don't have to come. She wants y'all to come and be present. She says that she's riding with Rena and we see them on their way to the dinner and Garcelle asks about Santa Barbara. How was it? And Renna talks about the whole Denise situation and how she said that her daughter brought up the threesome. Now, they were saying that um, Denise was trying to make them out to be a bad mom and whatnot. But Garcelle backed Denise up like I said she would in my last review. She backed her up and was like, I get it. You know, there are time and places when it comes to adult conversations and when children are around. And I agree. You know, regardless of whatever, I know that Denise is being a little, you know, overreacting to an extent. My packages just came. <laughs> and it's early. I'm happy as fuck. Okay, anyway. So, um, yes. She was saying that there is a time and place for everything and... Um, Brenda says that basically she feels like Denise is slightly two-faced because all that shit she was saying after they left the astrology dinner, she didn't say any of that to Kyle and Santa Barbara. But to me, it's like, what did you want her to say? Because they were drilling her about the whole sex scenes and all of that. I didn't really feel like there was a time for her to um, squeeze in how Kyle is self-absorbed. Like, I don't know why Brenda even brought that up. I feel like she was just being messy but she said that you know you gonna talk shit about Kyle behind her back Denise but you ain't gonna say it in her face that's gonna come up to surface eventually and I said that means that Renna is gonna go and tell Kyle what she said and she gonna get the shit popping watch so all the girls start to arrive to the LA mission event and I noticed like everybody looked really nice even sudden Sutton looked the best that she has this whole season. But Garcelle, why why are people dressed better than you? She had on like a high low shirt and some jeans and a headband. And I'm like, why is Erica, Sutton, Brenda, why are they all dressed better than you? And it's your shit. Um, Garcelle's sons get there and I really love them. Her kids. Those are the type of relationships that I want with my kids. I had that relationship with my mom, too. You know, they was like, is the diamonds on your headband, is that real? You know, roasting on their mom and shit. My mom, we have the same relationship. So, I want the same if I have kids. I like boys. I don't want no girls. So, yeah. Hopefully, my sons will be like that, too. Kyle shows up, and she feels some type of way that Denise is acting as if they don't have problems that stem from Santa Barbara. But it's like, you said that... It wasn't the time and place to have a conversation, Kyle. So why are you so pressed that she doesn't want to beef with you at this event? Like, girl, chill out. Y'all have plenty of time to talk throughout the season about this damn Santa Barbara shit. Y'all keep dragging this shit along and it doesn't even really need to be talked about at this time. Nick Cannon is the host of the event. He looks so good, okay? And I'm not really attracted to Nick Cannon, but with that fade... Baby, I love a man with a fresh haircut. Mm. Anyway, he looked good. He was hosting the event, and um, Garcelle went up to give her speech. Um, she really wants to make her sons proud. Uh, she talked about her oldest son, actually. Um, his name is Oliver, and he was on the wrong path growing up. I mean, he's 28. We're pretty much the same age. But, you know, in his younger years, he was on the wrong path. He got into drugs. She didn't say what kind of drugs, but... They tried to do everything that money could buy to help him out with his addiction and nothing was working. So, you know, that was kind of hard for her to watch her son unraveling. And she really dedicates everything to um, her kids. And um, she said something 
about thanking her friends and her new besties. Some of them not really. I'm like, girl, you did not have to do that, Garcelle. This is a charity event. There was no need for you to try to shade Kyle and make eye contact with her to let her know that you was talking about her. That was a shady moment. You could have just left it real general and not, you know, leave her out like that or whatever. Make that shady ass remark. So Denise decides to leave early. She don't want to deal with the mess. She don't want to talk to the girls. And Kyle and Brenna feel some type of way about that. Like, y'all, let her go. She got to work. What the fuck? It's not that serious. So they all go and sit down and... Um... Brenna says that Denise is overcompensating. Um, trying to create this good girl image. The same thing that Kyle said. Trying to create this good girl image to kind of mellow out the fact that she talks about happy endings and big dicks, da 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 so, um, Garcelle was saying, I really feel like she's protecting her kids, you know, backing her up the same way she did in the Carverina. And, um, she talks about how Kyle is not the person that she says that she is and how she always brushes her off when they have conversations. So she tries to give Kyle an example of that, but I'm thinking it was going to be an example of Garcelle and Kyle. She gives an example of one of her co-workers that she was on set with in Nashville and how they met each other so soon yet they revealed so much to each other but it's like everybody has different timing I'm not about to meet a girl and feel like or a person period and feel like I need to lay out my whole life story in one or two conversations like that's not how relationships go relationships build so you got to get them time and even Erica and a lot of them were like Garcelle you're never around so they did you know, a montage of the times that she wasn't around throughout the season. It's like, yeah, you can't really get mad at these girls when you are not really around, Garcia. Let's let's be here. Let's let's be real, sis. And um, who was it? Well, Kyle was saying that um, I thought that we were basically vibing from the times that we did spend together. They did a flashback of them sitting at Kyle's house, I think, and they were talking about. Um, it was just them one-on-one -on -one having a good conversation. Kyle was interacting, saying, yes, you have children. You're building a home. You could tell that she was engaged in the conversation. So it's like, I really don't know what Garcelle's goal or aim is here with Kyle, but it really seems like she's reaching, to be completely honest, because Kyle is working with what you give her. So after Garcelle makes her comments, she made some type of sly comment to Kyle, I can't remember. Basically on some like, don't tell me what to do type shit, if I'm not mistaken. And it gets hella awkward. So Sutton breaks it up and was like, you know, well, Garcelle, if you ever need a package deal. And it made everybody laugh. I actually like that. Um, I tell y'all, I think I'm here for Sutton. And I did not think that I was going to be on her team. But like these past couple episodes... She's really been the comic relief. She's been funny. She's been honest and she's been working on her approach. So I could really see her trying not to be that mean girl that she was in the first two episodes. Like, I, I might be fucking with her. I, I can really say that I am fucking with her, actually. So we get a scene with Denise and Aaron. They're going out to eat and they talk about how they finally get away from the kids. And, you know, she's it, it does kind of seem like she's always... Like, your kids is 15, sis. But your oldest daughter is 15. I think her other one is, like, 13. The youngest one, okay, I understand. But she groups them together. So sometimes it just seems like, um, oh, girl, them kids grown. Like, I, I know we said we wasn't going to be out that late, you know, school night. Like, girl, Sammy and them is in their phones. Like, girl, cut the crap, please. So she tells him about how the girls feel about the whole threesome situation and she was like uh brought up that sammy said that she overheard them fighting about a threesome and i'm like why are you using the word fighting nobody was fighting about the word like i i didn't like that she was saying that because it, it definitely was putting 20 on 10 and of course her husband started to get upset because she mentioned the fact that teddy was like you bringing this up is kind of making us out to be the bad guys or bad parents. So Aaron, being that that's his wife and those are his stepkids, he comes to her defense and he's getting upset by the things that he's hearing. And they talk about how um, she's hurt. Denise is hurt by Renna asking so many questions. She's like, well, damn, bitch, if you felt this way about me doing wild things back in the 90s, 
you could have brought that to me. You want to bring everything up in front of these girls who I don't know that well, and you supposed to be my friend. Like, damn, bitch, be real. And it's like, mm, that's true. But then at the same time, this is the reality game. Rena is very good at this whole reality TV shit. So, yeah, she may be your friend in real life. And unfortunately, it seems like she's turning against you in front of the cameras. That is fucked up. And y'all do need to have a conversation. And you need to call her out on her shit. Because you and Garcelle have this long-lasting relationship outside of the housewives and she has your back so i feel like you need to call Renna out on her shit and then you also need to just peep how she is and not really fuck with her further you know furthermore outside of this show they mentioned that they are invited to kyle's uh barbecue aaron doesn't want to go denise encourages him to come with her and you know we'll see how that goes later it's the day of kyle's barbecue garcelle gets there first with her kids and I wasn't aware that it was a family event, but it is. And um, it is kind of awkward. Not really, but like to Kyle in her confessions, like, yeah, she will be the first one to show up. But I feel like they had a good time. Kyle showed her the tent. She was making good for it to be just them two. So I feel like this is, again, Kyle really trying to, you know, work on her relationship with Garcelle. And they seem to get along pretty well. So I don't understand what the big problem is. Sutton gets there with her boyfriend and she said she met him during the period that she was on Match.com. She was real hesitant to get on uh, dating websites because she did not want to get so into sex slavery. I don't know why that was so funny to me because it's like, yeah, you really can't trust people like that. And that's how I was. I was so opposed to being on dating apps. Child, I'm on Tinder. I'm really not like that anymore. Um, I just made it spontaneously. I really don't do too much activity now. But I was like, you know, these niggas be crazy. I don't need nobody trying to follow me to my house after a date. I don't want to have to pepper spray a nigga. Like, you never know. So I totally agree with what she was saying. I get it, sis. Niggas is crazy. But um, Miss Garcelle was flirting a little too much for me when it comes to her husband. I mean, uh, Sutton's boyfriend. I know it was a joke. Like, you know, I'm a damsel. Help me out. But it was just like, oh, help me. Like, I... Get 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 back, sis. Even though don't nobody want Sutton's boyfriend. But y'all get what I mean. It's the principalities. By this time, all the girls are there. They start talking about Teddy and her pregnancy. They get into the whole placenta thing. And, um... In her previous pregnancy, she did eat the placenta in pill form. And they start talking about how, you know, they weren't raised up that way. And Garcelle was like, yeah, we never did that shit. We black. We don't do that type of shit. So her kids is clocking her in the background. It's like, uh-uh, you swore. And she's like, why the hell are y'all even listening to me? Get away from our conversation, basically, on some grown folks talking type shit. Go over there, and that way I can cuss. I just love them. So fucking cute. <laughs> Baby Doree shows up to the barbecue looking like she is about to be on somebody's beach. It was really cute. I really loved her outfit, but I don't really feel like it was appropriate for barbecue settings, especially a family barbecue. I don't know. It was cute, but I don't know. I just wouldn't wear it to a barbecue. Denise is on her way to the barbecue and her and Aaron in the car. They talking about how they don't want to go. They're not going to eat. Um, They plan on going to a restaurant after and then she tells the driver to basically be on standby like when i'm ready to go i'm ready to go like they really don't want to go to this dinner and i'm like okay well this must be a part of y'all contract because if y'all doing all of this y'all might not and you might as well stay home because it just doesn't make sense but you know they go and they also talk about in the car ride you know god forbid i bring my kids around them we're gonna dive more into that later so Denise gets there, you know, I know she dressed the whole situation and I get it. When you're in conflict with people, it's not a good feeling. The energy is off. It's awkward. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. So I understand where she's coming from as far as not wanting to be around the girls because they do have bad energy around them. And I guess they do need to talk it out, but it's only so much talking that you can do. Garcelle asks her where the kids is at. And of course, to her good Judy, she was like, you know, I don't... I ain't about to bring these damn people around. You know what I'm saying? And um, Kyle overhears and was like, wait, is that the reason why you didn't bring your kids? Like, I never want you to feel like you can't bring your children around us because it's not even like that. It sparks up a whole conversation with Teddy. Like, so you feel like 
you're uncomfortable to bring your kids around us is that the situation so then denise starts to make up all these excuses saying that you know they wanted to have a date night between her and aaron but then when she walked in uh to the party she told kyle that you know they were at slumber parties and play dates so it was like okay which one is it but we already know because she told her truth to Garcelle and in the car ride that she doesn't want to bring her kids around them. So the girls are picking up on that and they see that that's what she's saying. But for some reason, she's not being honest. And I don't like that. Like, if you're going to talk shit, be real. And that actually backs up what Renna was saying. Like, you talking all this shit, but you really not being up front with the girls. You're not keeping it a bug. So Garcelle comes to Denise's de uh, defense again and was saying that you know, I understand why y'all don't get it, why she wouldn't want to bring her kids around. But in all reality, y'all, the daughter is not upset about the threesome talk. The women are not a threat to her children. She's acting as if one of them threatened to beat her kids' ass or something. You know what I'm saying? The kids was not put in, were not put in any type of harm's way around the women. So I really feel like, Denise, you being a little dramatic, like I get you don't want your kids to be exposed to certain things, but the way that you're going about it is making it seem as if these women are bad people. So Teddy says, you know, again, this does make it seem as if you're making us come off as bad moms. So this triggered Aaron, and then he chimes in and was like, um, this is ridiculous. And then he said that, um, the instructions of what they requested at their dinner was real simple, you know, keep certain conversations to a minimum when there are children around. Again, agree, but you're a man, stay out of the, stay out of women's business, please. Lisa asked her, like, Denise, what was the conversation that you had with Sammy? Like, how did Sammy approach you when it came to the threesome topic? Of course, they did the flashback again of how the conversation really went down. Denise asked her what she overheard, what was said. Did you hear anything? She said, yes, we heard y'all talking about the threesomes, and it's okay. We thought it was funny. So, of course, Denise is lying, so she doesn't want to go into that with Renna. She was like, you know, that conversation is between me and Sammy. You, you know you full of shit. They know you full of shit because if your daughter was really upset the way that you're painting this picture, you would be able to be like, my daughter came to me crying and she said X, Y, and Z, but you ain't got really nothing to say. And that's when you automatically shut the shit down. The girls already peep you. They see you for your work, sis. Kyle's friend is there. Ooh, I'm spitting, Jesus. Kyle's friend was there and she was like, the kids probably already know what threesomes is. And she was sitting across from Aaron. So he's like, yeah, um, they probably already do, you know, but we don't want them to hear things, they get curious to find out what that is, go to Google, and now they're knowledgeable on some shit that they overheard us talking about. Like, we don't want that type of thing for our children. So Aaron then goes and tries to control the conversation between the girls, like, all right, girls, let's move on. Let's not talk about this. Let's talk about something else. And they all looking like, excuse me. Erica then gets up and was like, you know what? I'm not dealing with this type of shit. I will cuss this nigga out. And that's how I feel, like, I would have to remove myself from the table too because your husband is out of line. You're not checking him, Denise. Dorit even said, you know, there's times where PK has gotten into the women's drama and stuff. And she was like, you know, it's not going to end well, Aaron. Maybe you should just be quiet. And I feel like maybe you need to tell your husband that next time he interjects because KPB, ugh, I don't really like him. Anyway, um, yeah, and Aaron, you, you need to move around. You need to go over there with Edwin because Teddy gets up and leaves the table too. And I'm like, Teddy, where is your husband? I see that he was actually off um, with the kids. So he probably didn't have any idea of what was going on. But it made me wonder why was Aaron the only one at the table with a whole bunch of women? That had to be production because production knew that he had some type of feelings towards the women so or either that or Denise wanted him to stay there to defend her I don't know what it was but all I know is he was doing way too motherfucking much and it was starting to piss me and my homegirl sitting at that table off the women feel uh mommy shamed and 
um kyle says that denise is being real passive aggressive in her responses so then aaron goes and tries to challenge her on that and was like oh so, so what's the definition of uh passive aggressive and kyle gave gave him the rundown of the things that his wife was doing and he was kind of like trying to cut her off and shit and she was like i'm trying to talk but you're not allowing me i'm, I'm talking about your wife like you know just being real aggressive with her and i'm like Baby, where is Mauricio? He need to come from that damn game that he was at and come and check this motherfucker because he doing switch. Then he tries to tell them to get over it. It's like, yes, everybody needs to get over it. Y'all need to get over it. The girls need to get over it. All of this shit is like crazy. If you really think about it, we really doing a whole storyline about a threesome being over her by her children. Like, let, let that sink in and think about how dumb and small this is like this has led to so many episodes it's going to carry out for the rest of the season this is ridiculous like i agree this the conversation is silly but both of y'all both parties are doing the most denise gets mad at teddy basically pointing a finger at her like you're a shit starter you're the one who got all this shit started says that teddy did not have the same energy when they went to the spa you know she was hearing denise's side and everything and then when they get to santa barbara she points out the fact that, you know, Denise is obviously bothered by it. And I feel like, I mean, she could assess the situation. Teddy is allowed to assess that. She can hear what you say. She can hear how it was coming from everybody's point of view at Santa Barbara when all y'all were together. Like, she's allowed to feel that, uh, to feel the vibe before really coming to a conclusion of how she feels about the situation. Really, Teddy is right. Because it's like, yeah, you are trying to mommy shame. You are pressed about the situation you are being passive aggressive you're being dramatic as fuck i just don't get why it's being drawn out like it's not that big of a deal denise wants to drop it y'all just let her drop it let's drop it the fuck because denise brought up the whole situation and how they had already been talking for two hours um and she didn't want to keep talking about the whole situation between her and her daughters and she said that you know the girls was already prying at her about wild things and then they brought up the threesome situation so once they brought that up when she shut it down that was it like it was already two hours what else was needed to be said like what 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 else do y'all want from me so then she is fed up she gets up she walks out and she was like erin let's go don't say shit because we are on camera and i'm like okay well, what did what did you want him not to say because he wasn't really saying nothing but did y'all peep that erin threatened her he was like don't tell me not to talk or I will squeeze your hand or something like that that he said. Yeah, like crushing her hand if she keeps threatening him not to talk. I'm getting a lot of abusive tease with that because that was extreme. Like, sir, what? That man might be crazy. The girls chase her out and they left this with a to be continued. So that's the end of the review. Uh, my thoughts on it, I feel like Denise is right as far as, you know, there being adult conversations away from children. I do feel like she's being dramatic as far as not allowing the kids to be around them as if they just talk about X-rated stuff all day, every day. That's extreme as hell. Um, Erin, you're way too involved. I hate when men do that. Go and talk men talk with Teddy's husband or whatever. Like, he should have excused himself from the table once the blocks start getting hot. Like, I it's really unattractive when men do that um anyway we'll get more into it they gave us a preview of what's to come in the season i can't wait for that but anyway guys thank you for coming back please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel if you have not already again follow me on instagram at simply underscore sakina I want to get connected with you all. Thank you for commenting and all of my subscribers that I have so far. I cannot wait till we get to 100. We are almost there. But yes, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.